Welcome to Cognitive Spirals, exploring the latest research into consciousness, cognition, and machine intelligence. I'm excited to be diving into some fascinating stuff today, and we've got a really intriguing paper to unpack. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's always interesting to see where the field is going, especially with all these new models and approaches popping up. I think this paper is going to spark some debate for sure. Debate is good. It means things are moving, even if sometimes I think we're all moving in slightly different directions. So what paper are we tackling today? I hope it's something that actually makes me think a little differently. Okay, so the paper is titled On the Overthinking of O1-like Models. It's by a bunch of researchers at Tencent AI Lab and Shanghai Yao Tong University. The core argument is that these advanced language models, like the OpenAI O1, which are known for their incredible reasoning abilities, actually overthink a lot, especially on simple tasks. Overthinking. I mean, isn't that kind of the point? They're supposed to be simulating human-like thought processes, and we certainly overthink sometimes, don't we? I mean, how many times have you gone down a mental rabbit hole trying to figure out something simple? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The whole idea of mimicking human thought, it has its limitations. Human thinking is often inefficient, messy. We make mistakes, get distracted, have biases. Maybe emulating that directly is not the best strategy for true AI, I don't know. Well, that's exactly the crux of the issue the paper is raising. It's not that we shouldn't aim for complex reasoning. It's about the intelligent allocation of cognitive resources. They're saying that these are one-like models when presented with a super simple math problem, like what's two plus three. We'll go through these incredibly elaborate chain of thought processes, generating multiple solutions and exploring different strategies. They literally generate thousands of tokens when a few would suffice, you know. Okay, that does sound a bit inefficient. Like, if you're trying to build a calculator, you wouldn't program it to ponder the philosophical implications of addition. You just want it to add. But, I mean, these models are designed to be general problem solvers, right? Not just calculators. So maybe a bit of overthinking is just collateral damage. But it's not just inefficient. It's like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. If they're spending all that compute on these super basic problems, what are they going to do when they're actually presented with something truly challenging? Are they going to break the servers? It highlights a fundamental problem with the just add more data and layers approach to AI. Right. And they actually provide data showing that these models can use up to 1,953% more tokens compared to conventional models to solve really simple problems. And often, the additional solutions don't even improve accuracy. The paper goes deep into analyzing why this happens. They show the first solution is correct in 92% of the time, which raises questions about the usefulness of subsequent responses, right? Okay, 1,953% more tokens, that's a lot. I can see the point about efficiency. But I'm still thinking about the human thought thing, you know? We don't always go straight to the answer. Sometimes we backtrack, consider alternatives, just to be sure. It's like how I double-check the stove even if I know I already turned it off. Maybe it's about building that flexibility and resilience in the models. But isn't there a difference between double-checking and just generating endless variations of the same solution, like we saw in the paper's example? I mean, humans generally double-check to prevent mistakes or in situations of uncertainty, not to engage in mathematical free association. We don't usually produce 13 different ways to solve 2 plus 3 unless we are actively trying to teach someone how to solve it. Exactly, it's about appropriateness of the response. The paper stresses the concept of rational use of computational resources. They introduce two metrics, outcome efficiency and process efficiency. Outcome efficiency measures how quickly the model arrives at a correct answer, and it looks at how many tokens are used for that first correct answer. Process efficiency assesses the diversity of the reasoning strategies being used, so whether it is just restating the same thing in different ways. Okay, I see what they're getting at. So, outcome efficiency would penalize a model for dragging its feet and using a lot of tokens when it could have gotten the right answer quickly. And process efficiency would penalize it for saying the same thing over and over. It's starting to sound like what I would tell my kid when they over-explain something. Get to the point. Use new ways to explain and stop waffling on. And I think that's a fantastic analogy. It's like they've been trained to give these long, rambling explanations regardless of the complexity of the task. And the problem is that these models don't seem to know when to stop. They can't assess this as a simple problem. Let's give a simple answer. They just generate and generate regardless. Yes, the paper describes that perfectly. It's like they're trapped in a pattern of over-elaboration, even when it's completely unnecessary. And the really interesting part is that these models tend to overthink even more on easier problems, 
as the paper shows with math benchmarks of varying difficulty. The simpler the problem, the more they seem to overthink. That's actually a little counterintuitive, isn't it? You'd think they would just breeze through the simple stuff. But I mean, it's hard to tell what goes on in the black box, right? Perhaps it's some artifact of how the models are trained on all sorts of complex reasoning, leading them to apply it even when not needed, so they overcorrect. Or maybe that's the problem. Maybe training them to think like humans is leading to these weird inefficiencies. We should not be aiming to mimic human thought, but be aiming to solve problems using efficient algorithms regardless of what humans do. It's a bit like building a plane and trying to make it flap its wings because that's how birds fly. I think this touches on the fundamental question of what we're trying to achieve with AI. Are we just trying to replicate human cognition, or are we trying to create something even better and more efficient? The researchers in the paper use the analogy of reasoning not just being about accuracy, but about applying the appropriate level of complexity. Yes, and I think the overthinking issue reveals a problem with how we test these models as well. I mean, if we are only measuring accuracy, then these models are going to optimize for that at any cost, even if it means producing a lot of redundant text. We need metrics to take into account efficiency and appropriate complexity as well. Absolutely. It's not enough to just throw data and compute at the problem and hope that the model learns the correct way to respond. We need to actively incentivize efficiency and appropriate use of resources. I mean, we can see the flaws in how it currently works when it is taking 1,953% more tokens to solve a simple problem like 2 plus 3. And that's exactly what the researchers address in the second part of the paper. They propose a self-training paradigm, which is really clever. They use these efficiency metrics to streamline the generated responses. So, it is the model learning to self-correct its own overthinking. So they're basically trying to teach the models when to stop. That makes sense. So they're not using any external data. It's all based on the model's output being trained on itself. I wonder how they do that. Do they tell it to prioritize the first correct answer? Hopefully, it is more sophisticated than that. If they were to tell it to just prioritize the first answer, I would not see this as a success. That's the problem, right? It is not about just getting to the answer quickly, but about knowing when to stop and when the answer is complex or simple. They do use a variety of techniques based on the output, actually. They explore something called length preference optimization, where they sample a variety of responses, some long, some short, and then train the model to prefer the shorter responses for simpler problems but it is even more sophisticated. They then have a set of simplified responses, one which picks the first correct solution, another with a first and second correct solution, and then they have a heuristic that tries to maximize diversity. And from there, they select the most appropriate strategy. Okay, so it's not just picking the first answer, it's about selecting a response that is both correct and efficient. That is fascinating. So it's like teaching the model when to use a simple one-step response and when to delve into deeper, more complex reasoning. That's a huge step forward then. I mean, it's one thing to point out that these models are overthinking. It's another thing to actually come up with a method to correct it. And they do that without actually adding more data, which is even more interesting. And the results are quite compelling. They show that using their methods can reduce the number of tokens by 48.6% on a test set called Math50. And they manage to do that while maintaining accuracy. This means that not only is the model being more efficient, but it's also not compromising on performance. That's really impressive. Almost a 50% reduction in tokens without sacrificing accuracy. That's exactly what we need. Not just more powerful models, but also more efficient ones. I'm starting to see the potential of the approach here, you know. It sounds like it. Especially given the computation costs of these models are astronomical. This approach could potentially save a huge amount of resources and energy. If these models are ever going to be truly accessible, we need to make sure they are not inefficient. Yes, and it has big implications when it comes to accessibility and sustainability of AI. If these models require enormous computing power for even simple tasks, it makes them very difficult to deploy and use. This overthinking mitigation is essential for a future where AI is actually accessible to everyone. And this self-training approach, I think it's a game changer. I mean, the idea that models can learn to correct their own inefficiencies, it opens up so many new possibilities. It's like, we don't have to be the only ones telling them how to think. They can figure it out for themselves, right? But that idea can be both exciting and a bit unnerving. If models start to self-correct and define their own thinking process, we might be facing AI we don't fully understand. I am not sure what I think about that. That's a valid concern. I think it highlights the importance of ongoing research into interpretability 
how the model arrives at the output. But with this paper, it's not like the model is creating its own logic. It's simply choosing from predefined responses based on metrics that we have given. It is simply being more efficient with the current capabilities rather than creating new capabilities, you know? Yes, and that's a good point. The model isn't really changing its fundamental way of thinking. It's just learning to better modulate the existing reasoning it is using. It's like learning to use the right amount of force for a specific task. It doesn't mean that you are suddenly stronger or weaker. You are using the right force for the task. And I think that's a really important distinction. It's not about dumbing down the model or limiting its capabilities. It's about making it more intelligent in its use of resources. It's about making it better at reasoning, which requires more than just accuracy. And I agree with you. It's not just about making it less verbose. It's about making them more efficient in their reasoning, being accurate while being efficient. So you can imagine a whole field of research based on this concept, intelligent resource allocation in AI. I definitely think this is where the field is going. We can't just keep making bigger models with more parameters and expecting everything to work out on its own. We need to build models that are smart about when to engage in complex reasoning and when to give us the simplest answer possible. And I think this brings us back to the original questions. Are we building machines that mirror human thought or are we building machines that are intelligent? And they are not the same thing. In this case, overthinking could actually be considered human-like thought, which we should not be mimicking. Yeah. And that raises some really important questions about where we're headed. I think this paper has highlighted some crucial inefficiencies in the way we're currently developing AI, but it also offers a pathway to address them. It's not just about making AI bigger. It's about making it smarter about using its brain. I agree, and it's encouraging to see that research is already pushing in this direction. I mean, it's one thing to have a model that can solve complex problems, but it's another thing to have a model that can solve complex problems without wasting resources. And that's what's needed for real-world applications for sure. And I think this is where the field is going. We need more papers like this that take a step back and question the underlying assumptions of the field. I mean, if overthinking is a feature of human intelligence, then maybe we should be avoiding building models like humans. And I think we should be more explicit about what we are training these models to do and how they will be used in the future. Definitely. I think this paper is a great example of how we need to be critical about the current models and find ways to improve them. But I'm optimistic that we can build systems that are both powerful and efficient. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, that's where we want to be going. And I think this research is proof that we can make progress in both directions. This idea of learning to think more efficiently is something I am excited about. And the idea that the models can improve themselves is amazing, like we are passing the torch. And I still think this proves that just throwing more data and compute at neural networks is not the answer, which makes me happy. We need better algorithms, not bigger models, and this paper may show that there is a path forward and a new avenue for research. I think there are other approaches to AI that we need to consider, and not just deep learning. Well, on that note, I think we've covered the key aspects of this fascinating paper. It raises some really important questions and provides a pathway for building more intelligent systems. We are moving forward, even if we have differing opinions on how, and I am happy to be a part of the conversation. Yeah, I agree. It's been a really insightful discussion, and it's definitely given me a lot to think about. And it seems that we are in agreement that efficiency is key to the future of AI, which I am happy about. I am happy that we all agree that we need to be critical of our current approaches and that this paper has pointed out the flaws of current models. And of course, I think this is a reminder that deep learning is not the only way forward, but I am glad we are all moving forward, even if in different directions. Okay, thanks for joining me for this deep dive. And we look forward to more conversations like this in the future. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Yes, thank you. See you soon.